Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to this last study of this week, the last of the morning studies uh, relating to the book of Judges. And we're trying to finish off uh, this chapter 13 of Judges. And, but before we begin, can you join me in a word of prayer? Dear Father in heaven, we are so grateful, Lord, for the things that you teach us and for the time that we have each morning to talk to you, to listen to your voice, to be guided by your spirit, and to be bonded in fellowship with one another. We ask, Lord, that you can teach us, that you can help us as we uh, seek to um, glean light from your word that we can share with those that are poor in spirit. We ask, Lord, that um, each person can be blessed, that your angels can watch over them, and that you can be with us here as we study. May your Holy Spirit speak to our hearts and minds. May you give us wisdom and understanding. And we pray this and ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> Well, good morning again. And uh, the study that we've been doing um, is we're finishing up these lines uh, in the book of Judges. And uh, we ran into this new line, which I'm sure we must have drawn out. I have not been able to find it. I don't know why we wouldn't have drawn out chapter 13 as a line. Uh, but we drew it out again, and uh, like all lines, we had a period of darkness, a first angel's message arriving, its formalization and empowerment, and then a second message arriving, its formalization and empowerment. These messages relate to the period of darkness. The period of darkness here has to do with a character uh, that is not um, a bearing fruit, that is uh, Manoah's wife is barren but a message is going to come that they will that she will bear a son and his name is going to be called Samson and so um, we know that, that the spirit of the Lord began to move him at times in the camp of Dan between Zorah and Eshtal that's going to be uh, verse 24 and 25 now I'm not really sure how we we draw this line out um, so here I have some things that I had done. Um, you know, if we're going to take Samson's birth as one of these waymarks, we could put it as the last waymark, which is the fourth angel arriving. And, and that would make sense. And he's going to be born and he's going to do this work, which we're going to look at. Um, and, and when we're doing this, we're going through a process which, which I think is, is really beneficial. That is, people who are watching these videos see how we come to construct these lines. Uh, at the camp meeting, we're going to present the lines and, and, and the symbols. But I, I think part of the thing that's interesting is how God leads in our understanding of the lines. And we've seen things like that in the past week. Okay, your... Um, you have to mute yourself there, Mark. Okay. So keep yourself muted. Um, so, so we've seen God lead. Um, we saw that with uh, Jephthah's line. Uh, we saw that with um, each of the lines, how things uh, came out of those lines that we didn't expect. Um, we saw that with Ibzan, Elon, and Abdon. Uh, some amazing things that came in a study of, of that line in our final gleaning of it. Um, we've seen the, the significance of the iteration of numbers with Capricar's constant and how that relates to the symbols that we already had in our lines. Um, so these, to me, are very remarkable uh, uh, things that God has shown us in the last little while. And as we uh, present to the camp meeting, we're going to obviously present this basically a year of study of the book of Judges condensed into 
uh, one week. Um, and uh, uh, so that should be interesting to see how, how everything comes together. Because even though we're going to have pre-planned presentations, uh, when we study together in person, I believe that God's spirit will be there and we will see things. We will see it. We'll have a conviction that we never had previously. Um, and, uh, and, and my prayer is that we will have a work upon our heart that had not happened previously. Now, God's been working on our hearts, but each day we need a deeper experience, a deeper consecration. And, and a greater recognition of our sins and how they have separated us from God and hindered us in doing the work that he's given us to do. And we believe that that's why God's brought this movement through this experience of these lives. Um, so when we're looking at uh, Manoah, of course, this is uh, the way mark of Samson, right? So that in the line of the judges, we have um, the judges line. Samson is the third angel arriving, and we can see then that, that that message is going to relate to the experience of righteousness by faith, not just the theory of it. And the way mark that we have is January 11th, 2023. Now, we have lines for Samson himself, right? So we have a line that looks like this for Samson down at the bottom. And we also have uh, this, I think it's here, yeah, this line of Samson and Samson and Delilah. So, so Samson has a few lines, but this line of Manoah, uh, the purpose of it is that this is showing that the time of the end that relates to the story of Samson is a reform line that is even though this is a period of darkness in samson's line um in that period of darkness we can zoom in to a way mark like the first angel arriving here we're sort of zooming into the darkness preceding the first angel arriving in samson's line but we see that there is a reform line as well that is information was given us during that period of darkness these are like tokens that were given that prepared us for this time. Now, this line we have going all the way to 2030, but it's a symbolic date that we have there. We're not suggesting that July 18, 2030 is, you know, some event. We're just saying on this line, he gives us a symbol. And so we're going to look at that again because I don't know how clear that was to people. And so we're going to try to finish up this line today. And then what we're going to do um, is that uh, Sunday and Monday morning, there is not going to be a morning class. And I'll send that out in the email uh, tomorrow. We will have a study uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday next week. And then uh, we're going to have studies uh, the following week, the 9th, 10th, 11th, and maybe, maybe further. We don't know. Stephen's coming on the 13th. I don't think we're going to have a study on the 13th of July. And then we're going to take a whole week off from the morning studies, but we're still going to have the Sabbath morning study and the Friday evening studies. So those are still going to be uh, on. So I'm going to probably just give uh, in the email tomorrow, uh, give a calendar for July, what studies are going to occur in, in July, what times they're going to be at. Um, and, and this way, people know when they can uh, they can plan for when they're going to be at these studies. And um, so then we will, you know, July will be done. Once we get into August, uh, there's going to be some time off in August as well. So after the camp meeting, the whole first week of August is going to be taken off for the morning studies. And then the starting the second week of August, we're going to pick up studies somewhere. I would assume that we're going to resume the understanding of the lines. Um, that That's the plan. Uh, and to move into uh, uh, Samuel, 
and other books like that. But uh, we did, I don't know. I haven't thought that far ahead as far as how we're going to do that. <clears throat> okay, so now what we're doing is we're looking at this line of Manoa. And we're saying that this is a line that is the period of darkness. And we looked at Manoa's name, so I'm just going to review this really quickly. Manoa means rest. It's like the name Noah. The Hebrew number for that name, 4495. So in Strong's, it's going to give that number for Manoah. It's 4495. And if you uh, multiply that number by itself, that is, you square it, you get the number 20,205,025. And in that number, you can see, of course, we have 220 represented. We have uh, 252 represented and 525 represented. Um, so it seems to me that that, that number is significant um, in that it, it gives us this illustration of uh, the 777 structure. We also note if we counted that as hours, it would be 187 days and seven hours. So the 187 symbol of July 18 and the seven symbol of the week of Christ, the week. Now, the gematria of Manoah in English, the sum is 52. And the product is if we take the letters and multiply them is 21,840, which if we took that as hours, it would be 910 days. 910 is 13 times 70. So we have some of these symbols or these numbers that we've had in other places. Then we looked at the darkness, uh, chapter 3, verse 1 to 2. And the darkness is that the wife is barren. So this character of Christ has not been seen in our movement. And we're saying that this is the church as well, that the Seventh-day Adventist church has not reflected the character of Christ. It is barren. And then we have November 9th, 1989, which is the time of the end for our time. It's Daniel 11, verse 40b. It's the response to what happened in 1798. And this was foreseen by Lewis F. Weir, not the date itself, but the event. And when that event occurred, the, the walls coming down in uh, Berlin, East and West Berlin, that wall, um, that was noted as a fulfillment of prophecy. And um, there's 777 days to the fall of the Soviet Union. And we put that at the beginning as the arrival and the formalization of that message. Okay, so to say the darkness includes oppression by the Philistines. Uh, so the Philistines are an enemy that's come in to um, reprove God's people, to, to punish them. Now, the Philistines represent uh, uh, the study of God's word. So what Angela is pointing out in the comment of the chat is that we have two things. The wife is barren, but she's barren be in a sense because of the false worship, right? Now, the false worship that they're worshiping ironically, is the worship uh, that parallels to some degree the worship that the Philistines have of their false gods, uh, Baal worship. Um, but they are oppressing them. Now, uh, so they have the oppression of the Philistines, but also uh, they uh, uh, because when we looked at uh, chapter 12, let's see, 13, yeah, it's just that hand of the Philistines, uh, 40 years. So chapter 13, verse 1, they're uh, delivered into the hands of the Philistines for 40 years. And so we have this Philistine oppression. So the wife is barren. So, so we know that that's the lack of the character of Christ. This Philistine oppression... Um, is something that's meant to correct us, to correct God's people. So what would that be? What would the Philistine oppression be if we're going to put it as prior to 1989? 
because we have Philistine oppression, but it, what is it a symbol of? Other than just being God's corrective means. It's a type of punishment. Because we know that these lines always relate to how we study God's word. Right. So we can see that Adventists are oppressed by the Philistines in how they study the Bible. And so when we get to November 9th, 1989, what we have noted is that the church does not recognize this as a fulfillment of prophecy, even though it was prophesied by an Adventist evangelist from Australia named Louis F. Weir. So even though he described this event when it occurred, and even after, the church does not recognize this. So this event was a fulfillment of prophecy. And because of the Philistine oppression, that darkness because of how we study God's word, because we're controlled by the Protestant method of Bible study, we're not going to recognize this. Now, if we say that there is a formalization in 1991, December 25th, the fall of the Soviet Union, we can see that first we have the Berlin Wall come down. But what Louis F. Weir is showing from God's word is it's not just the Berlin Wall coming down. It is the dissolution of the USSR. And so that has occurred in that period of 777 days which is an inclusive count in this case. And then we have, um, so we put that as the formalization. And then we have 9-11 as its empowerment. Now, 9-11 uh, relates to this first message of the fall of the Soviet Union. Originally, Jeff placed um, the fall of the Soviet Union as a parallel to August 11th, 1840. But 9-11 is the parallel to that. It is the empowerment of the first angel's message. And this took time for Jeff to recognize. So it took time to recognize this. Uh, hey, Mark, your mic keeps coming on. Um, I don't know why it keeps coming on. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> so so anyway uh, we have uh, 9 11 this is going to be the empowerment and we know that 9 11 connects with 11 9 uh, which is going to be, be in this line the empowerment of the second angel's message but 9 11 august 11th 1840 um, yeah, so, yeah, so Jeff obviously was ignored. It's just in the chat there, Angela puts that Jesus says a prophet is not recognized, <clears throat> accepted by his own. Likewise, the church ignored Weir, Jeff Pippinger, and anyone else who tried or tries to enlighten them. It has little respect for L.G. White, and that's true. So the church is, as an organization, is not willing uh, to be corrected. But the people, the individuals can be. So anyway, 9-11 becomes this empowerment. So it aligns with August 11th, 1840 in Millerite history. And then we have uh, the second angel arrives. And we put there June 22nd, 2014. So we're using, uh, and the verses we're using here is 13 verse 19. Uh, for Palmoni, that was 13.18, oh, 13.18 for Palmoni, 13.1 to 17 for the empowerment of the first angel. Um, so the second angel arrives with Palmoni, and, and that is in our history, the presentation of Ezra 7.9, establishing the symbol of the first day of the fifth month. So this was not something that uh, the movement had done previously we hadn't taken a date like that 
and then began looking for its symbols. And that opens up all kinds of light. Uh, so without that understanding of Ezra 7-9, uh, we would not have the understanding that we have today. We wouldn't have been able to arrive at um, July 18, 2020 without that understanding. Um, so we're saying that, that this in this period of darkness, um, which we're, we're going to start at 1989, this is the period of darkness that leads up to 9-11. So... <clears throat> um, this might be difficult for some people when we draw the lines like that, that we're zooming into the period of darkness, yet it includes periods of increase of light. But that's because it's showing what that darkness is and the response to it. Right? So there is a period of darkness. So this reform line is related to that period of darkness, but it's a very specific aspect of it. So even though we have the Philistine oppression, this one here, the reason why we put the wife is barren as the darkness rather than Philistine oppression is because this story is about the birth of Samson, not about the whole line of that, that the story of Samson is going to be about, right? So in the line of Samson, the focus is not upon the barrenness of the wife. The focus would be upon um, what that oppression is, right? But here, the focus is upon the birth of Samson. So that's why we have the wife is barren, is the darkness. So when we get the second angel arriving, uh, we have this Palmoni. Um, what we start to recognize is that this is going to be about this message here. It's going to be about... Um, what we call the Mara vision. That's the feminine form of the word Mara. So Mara, the Mara vision, sometimes we say the Mara vision, but that's just because we go A, 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 E, H, but in Hebrew it's A, right? And um, that is the vision of the 2300 days, the evenings and the mornings, which is true. But the Mara, is the revelation of Jesus Christ. It's the feminine form of the word vision, um, often called the looking glass vision, because it's the vision that you see when you look in a mirror, as in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, and in the book of James chapter 1, right? You look in the perfect law of liberty. And, and so this is what this is about, is that character of Christ in his people, that is, he's being conceived in his people. He's going to be born. The wife, the church, is no longer going to be barren. <clears throat> so Palmoni is relating to this because it gives us the vision of the 2300 days. But then we're going to have this offering. So that's verse 19. And we're saying that this offering represents Ezra 7 to 10. That is, the formalization of this message is what happened on September 11th, 2017. That is, a presentation was given at the School of the Prophets on the structure of prophetic chronology. And that is going to be a study on Ezra 7 to 10. Right? So, so we have this... Um, this study, so from uh, June 22nd, 2014 to September 11th, 2017, we're going to have a period of 1177 days. So we don't have that in there. I'm going to put it in. Uh, I'll take this one. Okay. So we can see how this presentation on Ezra 7 to 10 is a formalization of the study of Ezra 7 9, right? And what would the 1177 days uh, mean between these two studies, between uh, this camp meeting here and the School of the Prophets presentation?
So what do we see in that symbol of 1177 days? Okay, so it's, um, this is not a prime number. You're thinking of 1117. So 1117 uh, is a number that's similar. Uh, and that's the 187th prime number. Um, 1117 is interesting too, because if you multiply 11 by 17, you get 187. So it's the only prime number I know that has that characteristic. Um, but, but it is similar, right? So we can see that 1117 and 1177 are just 60 days different. Um, 11 times 107 is 1117. And would that be significant? So if we go 11 times 107, would that be significant as a symbol? So we know 107 is the 10th day of the seventh month. And even if you look at it, you can see 11 times 17. In Hebrew, if they were going to say the number 17, they would say 10 and 7. Right. So can we see that 187 is symbolized there as well? So these two presentations, the presentation of Noel, uh, beginning at the camp meeting that started S September 22, 2014, that 1177 days to uh, September 11th, 2017, has to be seen. And that would be the formalization of that message. Um, <clears throat> and then we're going to see its empowerment. Now, the empowerment I put here as November 9th, 2019. I don't know if that's the best date to place as the empowerment or not. Uh, the reason why I put it there is that's going to be um, what, what we have done with this line. And this is where we're a little weak on this one. Uh, this is going to be not the offering itself in 13 verse 19, but this is going to be uh, 20 and 21. And those verses say, for it came to pass when the flame went up toward heaven from off the altar that the angel of the Lord ascended in the flame of the altar and Manoah and his wife looked on it and fell on their faces to the ground. But the angel of the Lord did no more appear to Manoah and his wife. Then Manoah knew that he was an angel of the Lord. So this is definitely the verses of the empowerment. Right. Because now and this is one of the things his name was secret. They didn't know who he was. There's this offering, this formalization. And then there's the rec recognition that this is the angel of the Lord. This is the looking glass vision, right? This is the revelation of Jesus Christ. Now, we're placing it as the empowerment. We're placing this all as the second angel. But if we understand this whole line is about the barrenness of the wife, and that it's a zoom into that barrenness and the messages that are going to come to address that so that Samson can be born, we can see why the looking at class vision here is this second angel's message rather than the third angel's message. But we connected with these 777 days. So we wanted these 777 days. Uh, but we could have done this. Um, we could have said, uh, this is 923.17. We could have said this is the empowerment. And, and that's going to be the end of this series of studies. And if that was the case, uh, we would have 777 days um, to um, November 9th. Uh, Twenty nineteen. Right. So we could have the 777 days there. 
Now, to put September 23rd, 2017 as the empowerment, uh, it's a presentation at Lambert Church. It's where July 18, as a symbol of the prediction before midnight, is presented. Now, we know that this is also a failed prediction. That is, the Protestants, evangelicals, some groups of them, said that this is going to be the secret rapture, um, marking the 1260 days uh, beginning, you know, that they understand from reading this futuristic interpretation of Revelation 12. And we know that Revelation 12 is about the birth of Christ. So would this not make sense that the Re Revelation 12 sign prophecy is about the empowerment of this second angel's message, Pamonai, right? Because it's going to be about the birth of Christ. So if we put this as Revelation 12 sign, would that make sense to people? Would you repeat that, please? Okay. So the Revelation 12 sign prophecy is Revelation 12, where you have this woman clothed with the sun, the moon under her feet, and she's crowned with a crown of 12 stars. And um, she's paying to be delivered. And there's a dragon waiting for this child to be born. Now, we know that this prophecy, its primary application is to pagan Rome at the birth of Christ, Right. Satan is this great red dragon. That's primarily what the great drag, red dragon represents is Satan, but it also represents pagan Rome. But we're taking that this prophecy of Revelation 12 refers to a celestial event that only has occurred once in history. And that's September 23rd, 2017. On that day, I'm at Lambert Church presenting July 18, as a symbol of the prediction before midnight. Not July 18, 2020, because we're not even time setters. We're not setting any dates. I'm just looking at, at Samuel Snow's letters at the symbol of the prediction before midnight. But since this is about this woman be, be, being barren and she's going to conceive this son, does it not make sense that Revelation 12 sign that that failed prediction that date, that symbol is placed here at the second angel being empowered. And we have the offering, which is this study in 2017, and it's going to end. It's going to be, it, it's going to be finished on the 22nd of September. But on the 23rd, I'm asked to do this sermon at Lambert Church. So it's going to be the last time I speak. And I'm going to present July 18th. So I'm, I'm there basically for a couple of weeks. Um, I think I'm going to leave on the Monday, right? So, so that's the end of my studies, as far as I remember. Uh, so I present at Lambert Church. And uh, um, so that was the, the structure of prophetic chronology. I was called in to speak uh, at this uh School of the Prophets. So you're going to see there it's whatever, 12 days from when I first present to um, does that make sense then? Dwight, does that help? That helps. Okay. Um, so I think it makes sense. The Revelation 12 sign is there. It's about the birth of Christ. But it's not about the birth of Christ back in the past. In this application, it's about the birth of Christ in our people. Right? And that sign is given. Right? Now, it's going to be a failed prediction of the Protestants, but it becomes a, a, a significant symbol uh, to our movement. So putting that there, I think, is, is relevant. Um, I can also 
say that the 12 days uh, between this, these two uh, is, is significant as well. And then we have the 777 days, days to November 9th, 2019. And this is the arrival of the third message. Now, the third message does relate to the first two messages. Now, this is going to be this close of probation that is predicted. Again, this is a failed prediction, just like September 23rd, 2017, where people believe that, you know, him that is righteous, let him be righteous still, will be marked for this movement. That's Parminder and Tess's group. And even many that are still in the movement today believed that somehow on November 9th, they weren't going to sin after that even though I told them that this was a false interpretation. They still believed it. After it passed, they, they just kind of ignored that they believed it and didn't really think about why were they believing in something that was error. But they still continue to believe error, even though they don't believe that they're perfect. Okay, so Angela says, uh, I think the presentation at Lambert Church should be noted as taking precedence, precedence, precedence over the Revelation 12 sign on the line. Well, I don't know about taking precedence. I think the two are tied together. Right. So the two, these two are tied together. The, uh, the Revelation 12 sign the reason why that date is significant uh, chronologically, first it's 777 days to November 9th. I didn't know about the Revelation 12 sign, but as a symbol, it points to this idea of the character of Christ. Right? His, his being born in us. Um, the September 23rd symbol that comes from early writings, page 74, even though it's technically October 23rd, that she had that vision. It's a typo that it's September 23rd. Misunderstanding. And um, so so I think we have we have to keep the Revelation 12 sign there. I don't know if it's about precedence, one more important than the other. Uh, Angela, if that's OK, just that I think they're all tied together. So this is something I noticed after the fact. But I think it's valid. I think that celestial event is a failed prediction. That is, people made a failed prediction based upon an interpretation of Scripture that was valid. That is, the way they interpreted the symbols in arriving at that date was valid. But what was wrong, the event that they were predicting? And this is an indication that we can't predict events. We can, we can use this calendar. We can use these symbols because calendars are based upon the observation of the sky. And they measure the signs, seasons, days, and years, right? And so that is a sign that was marked. But they didn't know what they were marking. They, they interpreted that symbol incorrectly. They didn't know it was talking about something that happening in Arkansas. They didn't know it was about our lines. And so now I put Samson's birth over here as July 1830. I mean, we could just say Samson's birth is the third angels arri arriving. But, you know, the verses here are, you know, 13 verse uh, 24 to 25, which is what I would put here. And I'm taking these two verses, 13, verse 22 and 23. Manoah said unto his wife, we shall surely die because we have seen God. And his wife said unto him, if the Lord were pleased to kill us, he would not have received a burnt offering and a meat offering at our hands. Neither would he have showed us all these things nor would, as at this time, have told us such things as these. Now, if we look at this as this failed prediction, um, we can see that we continue to see God's leading 
even though November 9th, 2019 never happened the way that we expected. Now, we can say, you know, on our side of things, Jeff recognized prior to November 9th, 2019, that what was being predicted by Tess and uh, Parminder was not going to happen. But here in this, this idea of what, what's being talked about here is that um, even though something never happened that we expected, we have a disappointment. November 9th, 2019 is a disappointment. It's like the first disappointment. Just like the first disappointment, there was lots of information telling them it's not going to happen in the spring. Right? It's going to happen in the fall. 2,300 days of land then. But it doesn't mean people weren't disappointed in the first disappointment. And this movement, to some degree, still had expectations about November 9th, 2019 that weren't realized. So, so we can see how that those verses would relate. And then we take um, verses 24 and 25. And the woman bare a son and called his name Samson or Shimshon, which means sunlight. And the child grew and the Lord blessed him. And the spirit of the Lord began to move him, move him at times in the camp of Dan between Zorah and Eshtaol. Now, um, if we look at Zorah and Eshtaol, Zorah is um, a word that refers to a hornet. Eshtaol is a word that means entreaty, right? So the idea of an entreaty is... Um, <clears throat> what's an entreaty? Let's ask that question. And why is it called uh, Eshtal? Why is it referred to as entreaty? Now, the first time that it's going to be mentioned in the Bible is Joshua 15.33. So let's go to Joshua 15.33. Let's see here. So, no, Joshua 15.33. What's important about 15.33? It's a wonderful manifestation of the power of God. It's the year in which the Exodus occurs. It's 1,533 days from August 11th, 1840 to October 22, 1844. It shows up in our lives as well. We know from the time that Jeff first presents uh, regarding um, uh, <clears throat> Rafi and Paneum, in Alberta, on January 14th, 2017, it's going to be 1,533 days to, uh, um, yeah, another thing here, 1,533 days to um, March 27th, 2021. I, I'm pretty sure that's correct. I'm just trying to do rough calculation here. Yeah, that seems right. Okay. And um, there's also the 1,533 verses in, uh, isn't it in the first five books of Moses? Or is that Genesis? You say Genesis. Okay, it's Genesis, right? Because that's going to lead us up to the Exodus. So the book of Genesis has 1,533 verses. And the book of Exodus is going to begin in 1533 BC. So, um, so pretty interesting. Okay. So this number 1533, uh, the first time we ran into it, uh, just was dating the, the year of the Exodus. Right. So we noticed then these other details. So nobody really had a significance of why 1533 verses in the book of Genesis. 
What do you think of what Iran posted in the chat? Um, well, we, we're just commenting on that. So the 1,533 verses in Genesis, is that what you're talking about? Right. Okay. Um, now, what do you mean combined 1053 or 3 times 351? Uh, the combined for Joshua 1533 is 1053. Oh. oh, okay. So that verse itself, if we're looking at the gematria. Okay. <clears throat> Now, we also have it in Joshua 19, verse 41. So it's just talking about this place, Zora. It's called Zaria in the other one, um, but Eshtahal. So they're mentioned together here. And then Judges 13, 25. Judges 16, 31 is, is going to mention it because that's where uh, um, uh that's where Manoah is going to be buried, and that's also where Samson is going to be buried. Um, and, and in Judges 18.2, 18, the children of Dan sent their family, five men from their coast, men of valor from Zorah and from Ashtahol, to spy out the land. Right. So you're going to have that again. Judges 18.8. 8, 18, 8. So Zorah and Eshtal. So they're often mentioned together. It looks like every single time they're mentioned together. <clears throat> so, so we have this these significant verses. And, and this is where it says that Samson will be moved. The spirit of the Lord began to move him at times in the camp of Dan. So the camp of Dan or the territory of Dan um, between Zora and Eshtal. Okay, now we, we noticed that Zora is from November 9th, 1989. It's 6,885 days to September 11th, 2001. And, and Zora, is that the right thing? Or is it, I always get this mixed up. Uh, so is, is that from, I, don't, I want to get this right here. So if I go from, no, that's not correct. It's going to be from September 11th, 2001 to July 18, 2021, 2022, or 2020. So if I go from yeah, September 11th, 6,885 days would bring me to July 18, 2020. So it would bring me to July 14th. So I note that it's close to that number, but it's not the same number. And um, so this word... Uh, Zora, you can see it has the. Let's see here. It's mentioned one time where Eshtaal is not mentioned. Um, and it's going to talk about Zora and Agilon, that's 2 Chronicles 11 10. Um, that's also called Zaria in Nehemiah 11 29 and 15 33. Okay. <clears throat> now, um, now when it, when we deal with Eshtaal, so we got Sora, is actually how it's pronounced, and then we have Eshtaal. Eight hundred and forty-seven. Now we didn't look at the gematria of these words or anything yet, um, so I'm going to do that. Um, 
Now, Zora and Esh to all, if we just take the gematria of them, is 167. Um, Zora by itself is 68. And Esh to all by itself is 80. So I don't see any real significant in that that I can see. Uh, let me see here. Okay, what did I say it was? Zora. So it's 167, right? Zora and Eshdal. Um, but that's with the word and in there, so I'm not sure why I have that in there. So it's 148 without and. So 176, reverse sum. 170. So I don't know if there is anything about that that we could see. Now, it says between Zora and Eshtal, so I'm just going to take uh, uh, between Zora and Eshtal, so I don't know if people like me doing this, adding this word. Um, so we took that phrase. And get, I'm going to take the word and out. It's 222 is the gematria. So I don't know if that means anything. And then we have the numbers themselves. So the Hebrew number 6881 uh, is 7 times 983. 983 is the 166th prime. So there we have something significant. So I think we have a symbol for what Zora is. In this context, if we're going to take, uh, so I'm just going to borrow this box here. Okay, so I'll show you what we're doing. So we're taking this um, Zora. So I'm just going to get rid of all this. It's the Hebrew number 6881, right? 6881 is, um, there's a couple of steps here, but it's uh, seven times 983, or, or 893. Oh, 983, I did it backwards, 983. So the number 983 is, um, can't remember how you write this out. I guess you write, uh, Something like prime 166. I don't know. How do you write that out around? How would you write that it's the 166th prime? Seven times prime 166 or, yeah. Okay, so seven times prime. So you instead of writing 983, you would write this. And 166, uh, the reverse of it is FFA, right? 6 being F, A being 1. So can Zora represent 
seven time prime 166. That is, does it represent FFA? I mean, is this is this too roundabout for people? It becomes an interesting consideration. Okay. Then we have Esh Ta'al. Not two E's in it. And uh, the number, the Hebrew number there for Esh to all is um, what was it? 847. So again, I haven't done anything with this one yet to know if it means anything. 847. Now, 847 as a number. Is interesting because it is 11 times 11 times 7, right? Oh, and we see that there. So, um, so Aran, you're saying, seems like we said between the school and Lambert last time. Um, Eight forty seven. I don't know what you mean by that. So you have to explain what you mean by last time. It's just the last time we were looking at that Bible verse. Okay, so when we looked at the last Bible verse, okay, so so when was the last time? What are you talking about? The when last we were time? going through Samson? Okay, so like months ago. Yeah. Or weeks ago. Okay. And so we we put uh, this. So remember, Zora also is a hornet, right? Which would relate to Bumblebee Road. All right. But you say we were putting it, we were putting this verse as between which two dates? Uh, not dates, just this, this school of the prophets and... The Lambert Church. Ah, okay. I now now I remember what you're talking about. It's these two locations. So Eshtaal represented the Lambert Church. Zora represented the School of the Prophets. Okay, so that's that's correct. Um. So what we're going to do here is we're going to say that this is uh, Zora is also a hornet. And this would relate to Bumblebee Road, which is where the School of the Prophets is. Right? And then we said Eshtahal because Eshtahal means, um, so we have this symbol, 71111. Um, uh, simply 11 times 11 is 121. We've run into that number before. And it's just 121 times 7. It's um, the divisors are 1, 7, 11, 77, and 121, and 847. But we can say that that would be important in that we have these divisor, divisors. So this is going to be 7 times 11 times 11. That's the, divis, that's the way that you can produce this number. So it's uh, the factorization is 7 times 11 squared. So 7 times 121. Um, so we're saying that this uh, represents... Uh, Lambert. Right. So this was Bumblebee Road, and I guess we'll put here School of the Prophets. And then we're going to say here uh, that we have decided that this is Lambert. Okay. 
Now, of course, these are where this is where Samson is working, right? This is his territory between the School of the Prophets and the Lambert Church. And we can see that here in this, um, even in this story, we have presentations at the School of the Prophets, presidents, presentations at Lambert Church. Right? Okay, maybe represent the day Jeff turned 60 in 2011. Um, that is, 7-11 uh, is November 11th. Okay, so what's the significance, significance of that? So Jeff is going to turn 60. Um, we're going to say 11-7-11. Right. And what is the significance of turning 60? Sixty shows up in our lives. People turning 60, 60th birthday show up. But why? What is 60 as a symbol? Now, Jeff, okay, so nobody's going to answer that question. I don't know why, but I'm not going to answer it. But he turned 60. Now, Jeff lives between uh, Lambert Church and Bumblebee Road, between the School of the Prophets, right? Um, you know, if we were to do a beeline between those locations, um, this. So if we were to do a beeline, it goes very close to Jeff's place. Um, it goes, uh, um, I'll have to show you this here in a minute once I get it going. But um, so we addressed that before, and I can't remember exactly how I do, did it, but I drew a line, and then I drew a line perpendicular to where Jeff lives. But basically, it just goes, um, is about a straight line that matches the roads that you would take. I don't know if I can get this set up very quickly. Um, I think I can get this done very quickly. But if we were to draw, yeah, it'd take me a little bit of time to draw this line out. But maybe I'll do it some other time. But anyway, that line goes basically right past where you turn to go to Jeff's place. It goes through that intersection or right by that intersection. So if you draw a beeline from the school, that is the school building to the Lambert Church, um, and the beeline is an intentional uh, pun, by the way, uh, dealing with the Bumblebee Road, right? So you draw this beeline, straight line. Um, it's going to connect these two places. And Jeff's place is uh, basically halfway, right? It's not exactly, but it's basically. Um, so this is, of course, about the message, the message of Samson. So Samson isn't representing Jeff per se, but it's representing the work that Jeff is involved in. 
Okay. So, so this looks pretty good as a line, right? We can, we can see we got um, Samson's birth. We have uh, Zora and Esh to all. Now, um, no, so 847 is interesting. I mean, it's very interesting, these numbers that we have. Um, you know, that it's Jeff's 60th birthday. That's a milestone, you know. Um, but it shows up in our lines, 60 years. It's a three score, right? Um, Now, the period of time, if we put it as a period of time, it would be um, two years and just less than three months. So it doesn't bring us, like, there's no span of time I see there that's going to be 847 days that, that I can see. So So I don't know what else to do with those numbers, but that's what we have, which I think is pretty significant. We have symbols for FFA, which we had already established that Zora was uh, connected with FFA in the School of the Prophets. And then we have Lambert Church. As to all refers to Lambert Church. And so we know that the that this is the territory of Jeff between these two locations. And we get a symbol for Jeff's 60th birthday. Okay. So that's Manoa, right? Now we have another line. Um, dealing with Samson. So here are our two main lines with Samson. So Samson has a line that starts in chapter 13. Okay, so Angela notes two years is 730 days plus 11, seven. And 11, seven, of course, can be a symbol for November 7th, Jeff's birthday. Um, so, I had noticed it was 116.5 days, but actually, if we're going to take that, so thank you, Angela, for that. I knew there's something I was missing. Sometimes I can't see things right in front of my eyes. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this 847 um, that is two times... 365 equals um, 730, right? 730 plus 117, that is a symbol for November 7th, equals um, 847. Now, I should be consistent in my use of symbols, times like that. So 
So this 730 representing two years and 117 days. So what do we make of this symbol? I mean, it's two years and 117 days. 117, of course, is going to relate to Jeff's birthday as well. But what about the two years? Is there anything we could do with this? Any, any thoughts? I'm just trying to ponder through all this. Yeah, I know, me too. <laughs> Is Jeff turning 60 on that date another symbol of the third seven times since we're, we're applying 730 there? Okay. Um, how would you put the third seven times there? I don't, that I don't understand. Three by seven. Yeah, I know, I know the symbol. How does him turning 30 has to do with the three, seven times? I mean, as a symbol of two years. Right. I mean, you could just say two years in the sense of uh, from 2017 to 2019. Um, in uh, 2021 on March 7th which was the 1700th anniversary of the Sunday Law in 321 AD um, if you count 847 days it brings you to um, this Sunday coming up when we're not going to have a study but uh, I don't know what that would mean. Yeah, we are going to resume the studies. But
Yeah, so I don't really have an answer to is using it as a span of time. Um, there's definitely significance in Jeff turning 60. I just don't know. The third seven times to me to be just not. I don't see an application of it here. I don't see it being marked. But that 1117 shows up again and again. And you can see how Jeff's, his birthday is connected to the symbol of July 18 through the 1117 symbol, the 187th prime, which 11 times 17 is 187. So, and that comes to the story of Joseph as well, 1117. But 117 is sort of a shorthand for 1117. Now, uh, so just to sort of, um, when we address this July 18, 2030 date, now, I put that there because of the 777 days, that if you take 4495 and you subtract 777, so if you count from uh, the fall of the Soviet Union to September 11th, it's going to be 3,718 days. Now, maybe I'm interpreting that symbol wrong. <clears throat> I'm simply going to take uh, that span of time. Now, in doing that, of course, it's not quite that because we're, we're taking an ordinal count and subtracting. So I think you would actually get uh, 3719, but we're going to put 3718 days. Just it's uh, Kanja says the sun seven to twenty three seven twenty three is the beginning of the twenty five twenty. Um, okay, so July. So she's taking July second, twenty twenty three. What this sun's. Well, this Sunday. Uh, yeah, so 723 BC, she's going to take that symbol. 7223. I don't know if that's primarily how I would look at it. I mean, it's an interesting symbol. I don't know if it helps us with this line, because I don't think that's primarily where we're going to take that uh, uh, symbol from. So I did 4324. No, I'm taking not the number of days. That's I did that wrong. So it's not really the number of days. The number of days, because I was taking not the number of days, because the number of days from, from there to 9-11 is, is 4324. So it's not that number of days. So that's why I chose there. The number of days here is um, a different number. So I'll just put the correct number in. Uh, the number of days is four three five four eight. So, so that's just a different number. Uh, so yeah, so I was just making a, a mental error there, which I do all the time. Sometimes my mental errors work out to be, you know, borderline genius, but that's just by God's providence. <laughs> Not by any genius. Um, but anyway, this is four, three, five, four, eight days. Now, uh, we haven't, I don't think we've ever looked at that number of days there. Now, three, five, four, eight as a number. Um, is uh, eight, eight, seven times four. So what, 1774 times two. Um, it's it is the Hebrew name for priest. That's interesting. 
So I'm just going to put that in there. Two five four eight. Priest. I know we spelled priest wrong. That's really wrong. Okay. So I'm just going to put that there. So from the fall of the Soviet Union to 9-11 is this number, a priest. And always what I do is follow the law of first mention. So I look at that word. Where's the first time it shows up? It shows up in Genesis 14, verse 8, dealing, 18, dealing with Melchizedek. He's the priest of the Most High God. So we have a symbol to Melchizedek. He has a symbol of what? In relationship to the character of Christ. He's without the beginning of days and our end of life. We don't know his genealogy without father or mother. He's a type of Christ. Would this be a valid interpretation to look at that those number of days there? So I'll take your silence is tacit agreement. And um, then we're going to have uh, from 9-11 to 2014, you're going to have a period of, of basically 12 years and some time. Um, I guess that'd be like 13 years, 2001, 12. It's almost 13 years. So that number won't apply. But anyway, we have this July 18, 2030 symbol, or is it July 18, 2023? Right. Samson's birth and his activities between Zora and Eshtaol, which is, you know, going to be talking about what's happening in the future. Should I put that as 2030? Because I have 2817 times 5 is uh, July 18, 2030. So I'm counting that from December 25th, 2021. I think the July 18, 2023 fits better right now. Okay. Yeah, that's just going to be a little bit before our camp meeting. Right. So maybe that is significant. So we, we can change that to 23. Um. Or 2030. So that's 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 my compromise there. And now it is so interesting. Taking, What's that? You're taking the compromise on this as Miller did regarding October 22nd, 1844. No. That's not what I'm saying at all. Unless I misunderstand what you're saying. Well, I mean, no. I mean what when was miller pressed to be a bit more definite on his time well with the making be uh, prior to making of the charts right right now i'm seeing this with september 18 of 23 as being our preparation for the arrival of a message that calls others out of babylon yeah Okay. So I can see how this fits a bit better than how I could see the 718 of uh, 2030 fitting, at okay. least for, for this line. Yeah, I understand what you're saying. That's why I like the 2023. But there is seven years between them. Right, I know. And so maybe that's just... Uh, taking that symbol of July 18 and then just giving us these two, these periods of seven years apart.
I mean, all we're doing at this point is looking at, <clears throat> at symbols because we're not looking to make a prediction. Right. These are just symbols, right? Right. So the symbols there uh, are what matter as far as, as how it relates to our line. So we can say 2030 relates to the symbol of five times 2817. Right. Now, it's interesting <laughs> um, whether this relates to what this line is or not. But if you count from July 18th, 2022, so if you go to the end of that day, so July 18 last year, and you count to um, you count 2,817 days, 2,817 days brings you to April 5th, 2030. So, so it ties that July 18th. So this July 18 symbol, of course, is important, and it, and it shows up in a lot on different different conditions. Okay. So, so it, it's there as a symbol, whether it's July 18, 23, or July 18, 2030. Um, but it's interesting that from July 18, 2022 to July 18, 2030 is 2,817 days. So one year prior to that date. So eight years apart. And well, we're actually going from July 18, uh, 2022 to April 5th, 2030. So anyway, we can see that there's significance in these lines. So this line seems to be, uh, the priest relates to 30 years, to 12, 25, 21. Yeah, around notes, 30 years. The priest has to do with the 30 years. So that is, we're going from 1989 to, to um November 9th, 91. Yeah, from 1991 to December 25th, uh, 2021. Now, so we may not even put, you know, this saying that this is the fourth angel rise. I don't know if we even need to, to say that Samson's birth is at one of those dates, but it's a symbol. Now, I know that July 18, 2023 has been marked out by Colin. So he sees significance in July 18, 2023. Um, now, part of what he's doing is he's just simply taking a pattern of three years. So obviously, three years after July 18, you're going to have the same pattern of date show up that showed up earlier. And so that's why he has July 18, 2023 in his studies. But anyway, we... We should be finished with Manoa, and then on not Sunday, not Monday, but Tuesday morning. Um, and, and Tuesday morning is July 4th, right? So on July 4th, this American holiday, we're going to resume this study, and we're going to address the line of Samson uh, that we see here, this line, this top line. And after the line of Samson, then we have the line of Samson and Delilah. And then just understanding these lines. Now, these are already, in a sense, fleshed out. We don't really have a lot to do except to glean through these lines. And, um, and then I'm going to be trying as much as I can to get these notes ready for the camp meeting. When Stephen gets here on the 13th, him and I, after we weed the garden, are going to um, uh, be working on getting the notes together and I'm going to need Dwight's notes and I'm going to need Iran's notes. Um, 
prior to that time because we we're going to get them printed the week before the camp meeting and i need to know how many notes we need to print uh, i'll probably print a lot more than i actually need because these still can be uh, given to people and sent out or some people need a hard copy of notes so anyway that's where we're at right now so let's close with with prayer dear father in heaven Thank you for the study today and for the things that you teach us. We just pray that you can continue to guide and lead in all that we do. And um, we pray for each person that you can watch over them. Help Heidi and I in our move and setting up the new uh, studio and office. And... Um, and we pray for our study tomorrow evening and Sabbath morning that you can bless them and uh, bless each person. May your angels watch over us. May the Holy Spirit speak to us. And we ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen.